Hi everybody, this video is for those of you who are training your own service dog for public access and are struggling to come up with exercises to work on inside of the house for public access because of this coronavirus pandemic. Now these exercises are actually very beneficial for all dogs because they involve confidence building as well as impulse control and teaching your dog to enjoy being calm and walking at your side even with distractions. So you're welcome to work on these inside of the house or in your yard with your dog just as a fun game to play with your dog, but in no way does this video um, promote that you should use a fake service dog just so you can bring your dog into stores. That's not what this is about. This is about helping those who are training their own service dogs for their dis disabilities to have games that they can work on before um, they go into the public. Now, actually, I would suggest working on these games even if there wasn't a coronavirus outbreak because it's a great idea to already build the skills and behaviors in your service dog before bringing them somewhere really public like a grocery store because if the dog is acting slightly um, untrained, it can be a turn off to the customers or the, the employees. So if it's a location that you frequent often, you want to go there only when your dog, you know your dog is going to show reliable behaviors inside the store. So a lot of this training can be done inside your house and you can also work in parking lots and places where people aren't around to work on proofing the public access behaviors that your dog might need in the circum circumstances that you have. I like to first begin the training by not having the dog on a leash, just so it's easier to manage the treats and the clicker, or maybe you're not using a clicker and you're using a verbal marker, but you're doing something with your other hands. Are you ready? So I'm going to pretend that this puppy carriage is actually a shopping cart. Um, you could also do the same with a rolling chair or just a normal chair, but it's easier to push a normal chair on slippery floor rather than carpet. Are you ready? So what I'm going to do in this exercise is teach him to stay at my side even though there's this weird cart in front of him. Now if your dog was worried about shopping carts or things like that, um, it's actually a great step to have something that's not as scary as a shopping cart and work with that first before then working with a clanking metal shopping cart. So one exercise you can do is just move the cart a little bit, mark and reinforce your dog for looking at it in a calm way. Good. And just get your dog used to the movement of it at a distance. Good. When your dog is comfortable with the cart, I suggest free having the cart turn away from the dog. Because if I go and I move the cart into the dog, the dog might start to have an aversion of the cart. So I suggest having the dog on the left side and going in a clockwise direction or having the dog on the right side and, go, right side and going anti-clockwise because in that circumstance, the cart is always moving away from the dog. Good. So you might just take a tiny mini step forwards and you can mark your dog for moving into the position at your side and also for standing and staying in that position when you stop. So you can take a step forwards, click, and reinforce your dog at your side. Good. Awesome. Because I have a border collie, I don't want him to stare at the cart like it's a sheep. So what I'm doing is I'm holding treats in my left hand up here and I'm having him look up here at the treats and then I'm clicking and reinforcing him with the treat so he doesn't get any weird excitement about staring at the cart but a non-herding breed most likely isn't going to do that. So once your dog is really comfortable with woo, walking at your left side when you go in a circle like this, you can increase the duration of how long you go and you can start to add turns in the opposite direction. Now it's important that your dog knows to stay at your side when you turn left. So as you can see, when I turn left like this, he turns his butt in um, and I have a video on how to train that in my Kiko Pup members program on heel work. But basically, you can check out the rear end awareness exercise video on my YouTube channel and that shows you how you can teach your dog 
to keep their butt in when you turn left. Good job. Okay, so now we're going to incorporate the cart now that he's uh, turning his butt. And you can see he backed away a little because he's a little unsure of objects moving at him. So that's why we're working on this at home. Are you ready? So we're going to do a tiny turn to the, to the left. So I'm going to move the cart a little bit. Good. Good. And I can revert back to using a hand gesture um, so that he knows what behavior is expected of him, which is luring him with my left hand as we turn. Good job. Good job. We're going to turn again. If you have a verbal cue, you can cue your dog to turn. Halo, turn. Good. Let's go. Good. You can also work on backing up. So I'm going to revert back to using my treat lure because he was a little bit nervous of the cart backing up into his face. So I'm just going to move it back a little bit and lure him at the same time. So he's learning that when the cart backs up, he backs up, but it's not because he's worried about the cart, but just because it's a behavior to offer when the cart backs up. So first, if you haven't worked on that, you can practice without the cart first so that he's not learning a new behavior as a cart is like backing right into his face. Ready? Awesome. Good. When your dog is doing really well, you can add duration. Then when you start working with different items as your shopping cart or a real shopping cart, I suggest going right back to step one and working on just a, millis a tiny step forward and a tiny turn at first. So you can do this in a, uh, a car parking lot with a shopping cart while no one's watching and uh, do dancing with your shopping cart and your dog. If you're doing that now, make sure to sanitize the shopping cart before spending so much time touching it around your dog. Okay, are you ready? So let's do some duration. Let's go. Good boy. Good. Awesome. Woohoohoo. Can you back up? Good. You're still a little bit worried. Good. Awesome. Come forwards. Back up. Come forwards. Back. Good boy. Here we go. No treats this time. Good boy. Awesome. Now you can practice using some obstacles like a chair or a coffee table to simulate aisles, products, or perhaps another person's cart that's parked and your dog's going to need to go through a tight spot next to you while all these things are moving at the same time. Are you ready? Let's go. Good boy. So I like practicing left turns like this. Good job. Good. And then once the dog is getting it, you can add duration, but also practice stopping at the same time, as well as backing up. Good. Let's go. If you wanted, you could practice also having your dog sit. Good job. Let's go. And lay down. Are you ready? Halo down. Good job. Ready? Let's go. Good job. Awesome. Another exercise you can practice is loading your shopping cart from different shelves, chairs, or tables and teaching your dog a default leave it when you go to reach for things because they really mean nothing and the important thing is doing the behavior of a calm settle or standing calmly next to you. So if your dog is having trouble um, not looking every time you touch things, which could then lead to going to sniff the items, you could use your leave it cue or an attention noise to teach the dog the behavior you want of not fixating on whatever you're holding. So I'm going to make my attention noise, click him for looking, and then I'm going to make my attention noise and reach my hand out. Awesome. And if your dog keeps looking, you want to do a smaller gesture 
like this and work on the uh, attention uh, looking at you uh, for duration before you try to add distractions. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Awesome. Now on the sit. Ready? Sit. Good. This is actually an exercise from my Manners membership on my website, dogmantics.com, but I'm going to quickly show you. You can work on a leave it from things on a counter like this. So a leave it obstacle course on different levels. So these are on a coffee table, leave it, or a chair, and then you're going to walk your dog past the treats just as you did before when there were no treats. So at first you might want to have them in containers, so if your dog were to go and try and get one of the treats, they wouldn't just get reinforced for taking treats off the chair. Okay, I'm running out of treats at this rate. Okay, so take a mini step forwards, click and treat the dog for ignoring the treat. And at first you can use your leave it cue, um, but you want it to become a situational cue that if there's food on the counters or on the coffee table, you don't have to say leave it every time you pass something that is enticing to your dog. Good boy. Leave it. Let's go. You can also practice reaching for and picking up whatever it is that's the distraction on the chair or the coffee table. Leave it. So at first you can use your cue, leave it, but then you want to get to the point where it's a default leave it, so when you reach out your hand, your dog doesn't think that it means look at the hand or look at what it's going to go to pick up. Good job. I hope you found this video helpful for training your service dog. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later, guys.